Hi. Hi. Yes, it's me. I'm the one in charge of everything, quietly. You just don't know it yet because I don't like to talk about it. In fact, I don't like to talk about anything at all because I'm an introvert. Um, this whole talk thing that I'm doing right now is kind of an oxymoron. Uh, an introvert talking for 15 odd minutes about introversion doesn't really make any sense. So, uh, but then a lot of things in life don't, you know, like the National Film Awards these days or the Kerala State Film Awards. Well, actually, Kerala State Film Awards do make sense because they gave me one of those in 2015. So they know what they're doing, sir. That makes sense. I take that back. Anyway, so how did I go from being an extreme introvert to being a judge, say, one of the best actors for a small period of time in a small industry? Uh, because, you know, the general perception is that actors are garrulous and larger than life and out there and networking and, you know, the, the image that you have of a star, an actor. Um, well, so you can imagine the most frequently asked question that I get is that how can you be so incredibly handsome? And so to that I reply, you know, acting, like any other skill, is learned through practice and perseverance and dedication and hard work, and that's what I did. It has nothing to do with introversion or extroversion. It, it's a myth. Uh, people think that there are born actors and there are actors who are not born, so you, you either have to be born with it or not. So you're then discrediting all the people who put in tons of hard work to achieve the kind of skill set that requires to become a professional actor. You, everybody has to train, no matter if you think they're natural or not. Even the natural ones have really worked hard to get to where they are. Not everybody has to go to film school like I did. I went to film school, film institute in Pune. But you still have to train yourself. You can either be really smart and figure it out for yourself, or you can join an institution, a theater group, or train under the tutelage of an experienced master. But everybody has to train. It's like if you see a brain surgeon, you're not going to ask them, are you an introvert or an extrovert? It doesn't matter. You know, he, he worked hard with his skills, he practiced, and he got better. So it's exactly like that. Maybe not exactly like that. We actors tend to glamorize and you know be a little pompous about our skills and comparing it to brain surgery and rocket science and whatnot. It's not nearly as complicated. It's more like riding a bicycle. You know, if the bicycle is made of crippling self-doubt and delusions of grandeur at the same time. It's a fine balancing act, navigating the two. So, so, so say you're an introvert and you want to become an actor or anything to do with the film industry, how do you go about it? Because you've been told that you need to be outgoing, go oh, meet people, network, you know, party and show yourself. How will people know that you do this? Well, you train, like I said. And the other thing is, don't listen to success stories of people like me, because everybody has different battles to fight. You listen to people like me, and you might fall victim to what is called as the survivorship bias. You know, I'm sure there are thousands, if not more, people who are just as talented as me, who work just as hard. And then there may be about 100 who kind of were lucky enough that they had the circumstances to support their talent. They came from comfortable economic backgrounds. Their parents were supportive. A big shout out to my parents, Vijay Kumar and Shubda, who really supported me financially and morally uh, during my struggling days, or as my dad would like to call it, his struggling days, because I was just chilling while he was paying my bills. So, um, so yeah, so there are a hundred of those are lucky, and then there are ten of those who are lucky enough to have been part of films that got noticed somehow, and then there's one who got a state award for his debut film. That would be me. So if you follow my success story, then what about the other 999 who couldn't get to where I am? Because they did the exact same thing. Um, so I don't believe in following that mantra. What I do believe in, though, is that you have to work hard, and then you get eligible for good luck. Um, and if you don't like something, then you change it so that you get what you want. And if it's still not coming, then you change more so you get what you want. 
and so on and so forth. Like a very wise friend of mine recently told me once, uh, twice actually, uh, just a couple of days when uh, she really needed to go to the bathroom and I was in her way, she said, uh, if you don't like where you are, move, you're not a tree. So if you don't like where you are, move, you're not a tree. That's the only mantra you need to believe in. So don't believe in biographies of successful people because people lie on their resumes. We know that. Nobody's going to tell you that they lucked out. They're all going to give you the same script. I struggled. There was self-doubt. I overcame it. There were obstacles. I overcame it. Yes, everybody goes through the same. But there is a factor of luck. Now, it would appear that uh, I am attributing too much of this to luck. Uh, but that's not exactly so, because uh, before I got my state award, there were phases of time where I was, I was equally um, painted with bad luck. Mm. So I believe luck and bad luck are sprayed in equal measure in everybody's lives. You just have to make sure that you work hard enough to grab the opportunities that luck presents to you and then work hard enough also to get over the obstacles that bad luck presents to you. And yeah, if you're going to read success stories, read the insights, like Mahatma Gandhi once said, that he is a very famous introverted, influential leader. He said that his introversion he thought was crippling because he couldn't communicate at one point and he thought he needed to overcome it like we are all told, we need to overcome our introversion. But then later in life he realized that his introversion was actually a power because he never spoke anything without careful consideration. So he never had to regret a single word that he said or wrote. It's the same with me. And imagine all the time that you save by being an introvert because you don't have the need to meet people or socialize. Most people want to be part of a community and energize with other people. It's a need, there's nothing wrong with that. It's how people are designed. They have different obstacles, they have different advantages. As introverts, we don't have that need. What we are left with is a lot of time. The only thing you have to worry about is how you use your time. Are you waking up at 4 a.m. doing your thing that you need to do, working out at 8 and getting done with everything by 10.30? When most freelancers are waking up, you're already done with one day's work and then you have one more day. So I do two days worth of work in one. Why? Because I don't socialize. After 7, my productive hours are done. And so I start winding down. By 10, I'm asleep. 11. I wake up by 4 or 5. Some days I even sleep at 9 and wake up at 3 and I start working because I know what I need to do and I know how to do it. So I, I don't wake up at 3 and wonder what I'm going to do with my time and my life. So, so introversion is actually a gift that way. Um, when I was in my struggling times and nobody was offering me any acting jobs, I thought I should write something for myself. And then I decided to learn writing. Like any other skill, writing also needs to be learned. It's a craft that needs to be practiced and polished. So I used to wake up at 3.45, write for a while. At 8, I used to take a fitness class. That's how I used to earn a little bit of money. And for about a year, I did this. I read books. I took online courses in acting, in writing. And that's how I studied the craft. I started to figure it out. And then, I had to find someone to direct what I wrote for me, with me as an actor. And But who's going to do that? Who has the time? Me. I have the time. So I decided to learn how to direct. And then I studied that skill. Then I studied how to edit, because then who was going to edit for me? Me. And so I learned all this. I even learned, got up to a point where I learned how to clean noisy audio. And so now I'm a one-man machine. I do everything myself. And here's the thing I discovered, that when I became a better writer, I automatically became a better actor. Then when I became a better director, I automatically became a better writer and an actor. Then when I became a better editor, I became a better director, a better writer, a better actor. It's something like 
the power of compounded skills. When one part of your brain lights up, your entire neurology kind of lights up and everything gets connected. It, it works the same with any physical skill also. If you're a gymnast and you're working on one particular skill and you've let go of some other skill to train on another skill, and then a year later you go back to your old skill and try it out, you realize you've actually improved much more in the other skill without practicing it at all. You're even maybe able to lift heavy weights now without ever having trained in weightlifting. That's just how the system works. So these are the advantages of being an introvert. Now, like I said, have I always been lucky? No, because uh, like people point out, it was very brave of you to have chosen to play a homosexual in your first film. It was not brave, it was desperate. I had no money. I would have played a dead body at the time if you paid me some money. I actually got a, when I was in Bombay, I got a, got a call for a TV show called Pi uh, for the role of a mathematician. They said no audition required, just come to Film City and directly start shooting. And I was thrilled. I thought finally somebody's got the casting right because I'm an engineer. They've got me as a mathematician for a show called Pi. Seems like it's some kind of mathematical mystery thing happening. It's brilliant. That's why they don't need an audition. And I land up on set and I realized Pi is actually short for private investigator. It was a show about a private investigator who was played by some other uh, actor. And the mathematician in that episode was the victim. And he had to be dead, which is why there was no audition. Um, and uh, so I lay there dead for about six, seven hours as the private investigator did his thing with, you know, there's, oh, look, there's things in his nails. Oh, look how incredibly handsome. You know. uh, but still, you know, people admired me for my dedication because I lay there motionless. The director, the co-actors all came and said, you are so dedicated. You were laying there like a real dead body. Your training really shows. shows. And I said, it's not my training, it's the cold. I can't move because I'm freezing. But when my biography comes out, I'm going to say, be so dedicated to your craft that even when you're playing a dead body, do it with that kind of conviction as I did. That's why don't trust biographies. So anyway, um, this phase also went through my life. Then I got to direct my own show called Not Fit, which I wrote, directed, and acted in. Uh, how? Because I had a lot of time. And uh, I wrote it and took about a year to pitch it. And then I took about a year to write it, write the whole thing, and uh, direct, and shoot, and edit, and everything. Uh, and when it finally was ready to be released, everybody thought, this is amazing stuff. This is. Uh, the first time this kind of content has come in India, it's completely original, this is going to make waves and everything. And I thought I'm destined for internet superstardom. Because this was before I got the state award. Um, and the show released and nobody really, the audience didn't take to it. For whatever reason, it, the marketing was not right or the timing was not right, the audience it was aimed was at was not perfect. So bad luck, what to do? But by far the worst bad luck that I've had is with my back. Um, I apparently have this condition, uh, which 3% of people in the world have, where the joint between two vertebrae is a little weak, so it snaps sometimes. And most people who are sedentary don't even realize they have this condition because they don't exert their back so much. Not me. I used to do a lot of stunt work uh, as a kid. And I did that all very recklessly without proper training or foundation in anything. And my body took it for a while and then when I was about 22, it broke. It literally is called spondylolisthesis. And uh, while I was at FDI, I was bedridden for almost two years uh, in film school. So I used to take my acting classes lying down at the back uh, because I couldn't participate, uh, sit down for too long or participate in any of the physical activities. Um, and I used to wear this big metal brace that was custom built for my measurements and everything. And I used to walk around with it, you know, as a warning sign for everybody outside my shirt. So I, I, I didn't want anybody coming and jostling me like, hey, hey, what are you doing riding in pain on the floor, man? 
what happened? You know, I didn't want that to happen. So, so one day I was having lunch and the mess manager came to me and he said, hey, you're such a good looking chap, why do you wear this outside? Why don't you hide it? Why do you want to show people your weakness? And I said, you know, it's temporary while my back heals and um, people should know, you know, give me their space, my space. So he said, he started laughing, he said, temporary, that's good, that's good. And then he made me touch his back and then he showed uh, here and I saw he had the exact same metal brace and he said, 30 years, 30 years I am wearing this, nobody knows. This is not temporary. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, that was a wake-up call. Oh my God, I don't want to be this in 30 years. Uh, discouraging young people from being active. So I, the first thing I went is went to my hostel room and threw the belt out of the window. And the next thing I did was went back out and got the belt back because it was a little expensive and very uh, hard to get made. Uh, and I didn't know at the time if my back was really going to heal because it seemed like a hopeless situation at the time. And then slowly I started uh, to work my back with some yoga and some light stretching. Um, and I realized that my back had actually become very stiff from the belt because there was no movement in it. The muscles had started losing their mobility from lack of use. In, in movement uh, culture, we say something that if you don't use it, you lose it. So the body kind of conserves energy by eliminating movements that it thinks doesn't require. So my back was eliminating all kinds of movements and I slowly started about three months later I was lifting weights again and I was going good and one day I was warming up with a little bit of a forward bend and I just got stuck there. I heard a pop and then I fell on the floor and I didn't get up and I thought what the hell went wrong? I was doing the exact same thing for three months. This is not what was supposed to happen. How did this happen? And that's the night I wrote my first ever suicide note. Uh, hopefully my last. But I didn't go through with it, obviously. Because I read it and it was shit. It was nonsense. It was not inspiring. It had no depth, no profundity, nothing. Well, who cares? So I thought this is not how I want to go. Okay, let's do this again. I started from scratch. Every few months my back would give out a little bit. So then I'd start from scratch again. And over time, I figured it out. And now I have a great coach. And now I do somersaults and backflips and uh, back, back handsprings and all kinds of nonsense that I never thought I would be able to do even with a fantastic back. Sure, I have to nurse my back because it's broken. It's really broken, but I've managed to strengthen my core and understand how all of this works. Um, how did I do that? Because I have time. Um, so, yep, so uh, work hard makes you eligible for good luck and eligible to be able to overcome bad luck. And always remember, if you think introversion is holding you back, think again, because it might be you who's holding yourself back and if you ever find yourself standing in the way of somebody who desperately needs to go to the bathroom, move because you're not a tree. Thank you.